Okay, the major impetus for this work was uh, the very simple fact that <clears throat> glioblastoma is the most aggressive and malignant form of human brain tumors have been classified for the same way for several decades now. And yet, at the same time, we've had an explosion in genomics and an explosion in particular in imaging. And you'll hear a lot about imaging at this conference <clears throat> and the clinical application of imaging, but in particular, MRI imaging, which is now um, an absolutely essential part of what I do as a practicing neurosurgeon. We use image-guided neurosurgery. Uh, we have precise mechanisms in which to image tumors. So why aren't we using the new advances in imaging to both classify tumors, select particular treatments, and um, evaluate the response to our new agents? So that was the major impetus for doing this work, which was an attempt to correlate new Im imaging strategies on MRI to well-known genetic mutations in glioblastoma. The most prevalent of which I study in my lab is the variant 3 EGF receptor mutation, originally identified in glioblastoma, but does have prevalence in other tumors. It's a highly oncogenic protein that gives uh, patients a poorer prognosis and has some treatment uh, implications. So it's important if we can know the status of this mutation and ideal if we could know the status of this mutation non-invasively without the need to get tissue. Glioma biology has exploded in the last 10 years. The focus of my presentation tomorrow will be on this particular subtype of glioblastomas, as I just alluded to. It's the most aggressive form. It's a rarely to never expressed in normal tissues, and it also has some very important implica uh, implications for treatment selection. And the goal is to correlate cytogenomic, uh, genomic and cytogenetic alterations to MRI imaging. As I said, this oncogene has uh, some um, status as a predictor of therapeutic sensitivity. There's some controversial data that's already been published that certain subtypes of the EGFR V3 tumor will, e will be even more responsive, not less responsive, to particular EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And there's some very interesting clinical data on EGFR V3 targeted immunotherapy, in particular work at Duke and MD Anderson, and now part of a multi-center trial. So the, knowing the status of this oncogene uh, is important for treatment selection as well as for uh, prognosis. And the hypothesis was simple. <clears throat> if we can evaluate the cerebral blood volume by MRI, and I'm not going to get into the mechanism by which we do, do this on the MRI today, we will tomorrow, We've already shown in previous publications that elevate, elevation in cerebral blood volume, which is a surrogate for the number of blood vessels a tumor has, should be up in a highly aggressive tumor. If this is a bad tumor and this is a, uh, a bad uh, marker, then the two should be linked. The second part of the work was to see whether the upregulation of this, as calculated by MRI, was mediated by the production of VEGF. MRI is a, is a much better imaging modality for the brain than other modalities. We're not talking about PET scanning here or bioluminescent studies. We're talking about fine anatomic views of the brain, which not only show the location of the tumor, but allow us to, to understand the metabolism and the blood flow to these tumors by contemporary standards. So in, these, in this cohort that we studied for this presentation, 35 patients were evaluated and the uh, regional cerebral blood volume was calculated in both EGF receptor V3 positive and negative tumors. So the MRI was utilized to, to identify a marker, a non-invasive surrogate marker, and then, then that was compared to the gold standard, which is tissue, tissue analysis. We will not get into the uh, methodology today, but the bottom line is that by eight different independent measures, we found a statistically significant result between the uh, level of regional cerebral blood volume and the presence of the EGF receptor variant 3 mutation. When we looked at whether this upregulation of CBV, once again, that's a non-invasive method of detection, mathematically calculated from the MRI scan. When we then went back and looked at the tissue for VEGF staining, we were surprised to learn 
that the upregulation of the CBV value was not completely explained by VEGF. There was a trend towards significance, but it was not completely uh, explained by this one molecule. The reasons for that could be numerous. There are many other proangiogenic factors besides VEGF. CBV is not a, a measure necessarily of angiogenesis. There may be other more complex physiological phenomena going on. So this was not uh, a shock to us. What was uh, impressive to us was the degree of the prediction model that we were able to develop from our data. And if we look at the CBV value and we uh, determine which is a better marker of predicting the EGF receptor mutational status, we were surprised to learn that the odds ratio for CBV was 2.5, which means that for any unit increase in CBV, the odds ratio went up 2.5 for the presence of this mutation. And when we calculated and utilized both CBV and VEGF in our prediction model, we were able to show uh, a odds ratio of 2.7, which is a highly significant finding in a biological system. The conclusion is, in this cohort, the MRI non-invasively determined CBV value is a non-invasive biomarker for EGFR-V3 mutation. In conclusion, we believe that the CBV value as determined by MRI can be used to predict the mutational status, which then has implications for not only diagnosis and treatment selection, but for evaluation of treatment response. We can easily visualize a situation in which non-invasive uh, non uh, analysis allows us to not in all cases obtain tissue and then evaluate, more importantly, tumor progression and treatment response over time. Remember, these patients are getting these MRI scans as a routine clinical measure every several months to follow their tumor. We're now able to incorporate an analysis such that we can follow the change in the CBV value and potentially even monitor the alteration or the change in the mutational status of the tumor population. So in conclusion, this study offers an intriguing link between an imaging modality and the mutational status of a human tumor. Thank you.